My name is Luca, and I'm a bisexual, and I like to sleep with both men and women, obviously, and I feel comfortable uh, completely with both. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Where Are They Now? In today's video, I'll be telling you everything you need to know about Don't F With Cats criminal Luca Magnata. Luca has been deemed as a sick killer whose twisted ways landed him serving a life sentence behind bars once he was finally caught and justice was performed in 2012. If you don't already know, Luca is the man at the center of Netflix's Don't F With Cats documentary. Luca is Canadian born and currently has no chance at parole for the severity of his arrest. But his beginning was once humble. He stripped and was an exotic film star and escort. His virtual life eventually shifted though because around the time he turned 28, he was beginning to upload much darker, heavier posts that depicted various degrees of violence. When he was 30, he had taken the life of a Chinese international student. Aside from just harming him, he also shipped six separate parts of the student's body to six different locations and then fled to Europe. His eventual arrest took place in Berlin and he was brought back to Canada to face trial. Luke was later convicted on five counts, all of which included first degree murder, committing an indignity to a body, criminally harassing members of parliament, mailing obscene and indecent material, and publishing obscene materials. But before we dive deeper into this topic, I should probably explain his upbringing in full. Luca's birth name was Eric Clinton Kirk Newman until he legally changed it to Luca Rocco Magnata on August 12, 2006. He was raised in Scarborough, Ontario with a birth date of July 24, 1982. Luca's father, Donald Newman, was diagnosed with severe mental problems as early as 35 years old, eventually being told he was a paranoid, schizophrenic, maniac depressive in 1996. His mother was alleged to have been a germaphobe due to her extreme fear of germs and obsession with cleaning, often locking her children out of the house because of it. His parents divorced by the time Luca was a teenager. Luca held the title of eldest sibling of three children with his one unnamed brother and his sister Melissa Newman. He and his brother were homeschooled until 1998, so they lived quite an isolated life. He studied at Weldon Secondary School where his classmates claimed he was a target for bullies and there is still no information on whether or not he graduated. In 2001, Luca made the move from Scarborough to Toronto and his days of working the pole started in 2002 at a nightclub called Remington's. This is around the same time he began appearing in adult films, having completed his second by 2003. 2003 would also be the year he befriended a 21 year old woman who was diagnosed with a mental age of 8 to 12 years old, who he would later assault as well as film the entire crime. After having taken advantage of this young woman, he then persuaded her to apply for a credit card, which he used to eventually accumulate $10,000 in unpaid bills. The following year in 2004, Luca was charged with sexual harassment and fraud, and despite the later charge ending up being dropped, he was still tried for the first. The result of this trial was the judge let him off easy as he came to court with his media report, which revealed his significant psychiatric issues. Moving on to 2005, Luca made appearances as a model in Fab Magazine for their Fab Boy pinup feature, which was a gay bi-weekly periodical from Toronto. In this, he referred to himself as Jimmy, who was Russian born, and working towards becoming a homicide police officer. After this, he continued to make multiple cameos in more adult films, while also still working as an escort, under the aliases of Jimmy and Vladimir Romanov. The next period of his life would see Luca leading his virtual life through setting up dozens of usernames, as well as maintaining 20 websites and 70 Facebook pages and discussion forums. He would plant all sorts of rumors about himself through the widespread of his social media accounts, one for example being that he was in a then relationship with a high profile Canadian convicted murderer named Carla Homolka. Once March 2007 rolled around, Luca had a debt of 17000 to his name. He could not pay off the bankruptcy and filed under the causes of illness, lack of employment, insufficient income to pay off debts. By this period, his unsuccess also started kicking in as he lacklusterly competed in reality shows like Slice Network's Plastic Makes Perfect and Out TV's Cover Guy. In October 2009, Luca accompanied a 70 year old man to tour Russia, Italy, and France. And this is where it's known that his online postings took a nasty turn. In the fall of the following year, Luca had posted a video with a link of a man being brutally beaten to death on one of his many Facebook pages. Right before Christmas, another extremely gruesome video began circling the internet. In it, there is an unidentified man who stuffed kittens in a garbage bag and then proceeded to suffocate them with a vacuum cleaner by sucking all the air out. 
This of course brought animal lovers intense outrage and sparked the entire controversy behind the Netflix documentary Don't F With Cats as mentioned earlier. A Facebook group called Find the Vacuum Kitten Killer for Great Justice was created and another animal protection group known as Rescue Inc posted a $5,000 reward in exchange for information which could hopefully lead to the arrest of the killer. It wasn't long however in January 2011 to be exact when a new group of animal lovers on Facebook began pointing fingers at Luca and a police file was led to open up on him. But despite Luca's initial alarm for people suspecting him behind the kitten massacre, he still continued to post two more videos online which showed even more horrific killings of kittens. Shortly after on May 15th and 16th separately, there was a slew of new online postings of violence. One of the new videos soon uploaded on May 25th was entitled One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. And followers of the previous kitten videos were now starting to sense similarities and patterns in these postings and titles. But at this point, Luca had already relocated from Toronto to Montreal, unbeknownst to pretty much the whole world. Viewers were kicked to report the video to the police the next day, who confirmed the footage was authentic and identified the victim as Asian. On May 29th, Chinese man Lin Jun was reported to have gone missing. During the same day, a package had arrived at the Conservative Party of Canada's national headquarters, and in it was a left foot. Another parcel had contents of a left hand, which was found in a Montreal post office. The police's first clue came when a decomposing torso was discovered near a Montreal apartment building in a garbage pile. Their surveillance footage from the building showed a then unidentified man pulling numerous garbage bags outside. Soon the police went inside Luca's blood soaked apartment, but the felon had already booked it to Paris via his personal passport. Eventually, Canada issued a countrywide arrest warrant under the grounds of not just murder, but four other counts of charges ranging in severity. On May 31st, 2012, Interpol had issued a red corner notice as per a request of Canadian police. Luca's arrest was finally served on June 4th, 2012 in Berlin, and he was handed over to Canadian authorities on the 18th. The start of Luca's trial took place the next day on the 19th when Luca had pled not guilty. His trial lasted 12 weeks, and out of that period, 10 were spent on the hearing testimony. His conviction was served officially on December 23rd, 2014. Since Luca's conviction of killing, dismembering, and filming his crimes against Lin Jun, Alongside his hinted occurrences of severe animal cruelty videos posted on the internet, he's again been given an automatic life sentence with no parole. He was found guilty of all charges and Netflix DFWC looked directly into the people who helped track him down. His current sentence is being served at Quebec's maximum security prison, Port Cartier Institution, where he also has an additional 19 years past his life sentence to be served concurrently. In 2017, reports detailed he was getting married to another fellow inmate named Anthony Jolin. They tied the knot on June 26, 2017, and his mother was there as a witness. His victim, whose full name is Lynn Justin, was studying as an undergraduate for engineering and computer sciences at Concordia University. Now that is it for today's WATN. If there are any other Hollywood hotties you would like to see in our next rundown, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below, and don't forget to let us know what your thoughts are on today's Where Are They Now video. This was your host, Michaela and I'll see y'all in the next one.